Hi, thanks for joining us. My name is Jill from uh, True North Insight, and I'm one of the meditation and Dharma teachers, and we have lots of uh, beautiful community of teachers now with lots of different um, times and groups. So check that out on uh, True North Insight. I'll put the link down below if you're watching later on YouTube. And thanks to those who have shown up, it feels like in person on the Zoom call here. Isn't that a statement? Um, thank you all for being here. Um, so the topic tonight is one that sadly many of us have experience with and hopefully hopefully not too often, but I'm sure there's been times when it's happened for all of us. And it's, it's a teaching that comes from uh, the written teachings that we have from the oral tradition. Uh, that's a, a story of a conversation between the Buddha and uh, somebody named Akosa. Or in some, I'm working with three different translations here from this written translation. And um, in one, it says Akosaka. And the others, it says Akosa. And Akosa is basically a nickname, really, because uh, that Akosa is a Pali word. And when I looked it up it, in the Pali English dictionary, it means someone who speaks abusively or contemptuously um, to, to someone or about others. Um, Akosa means uh, also it said shouting at, abuse, insulting, reproaching, and reviling. And so I looked up what reviling means. It basically me means uh, verbal abuse. And so this um, conversation is happening by someone named Akosa. So maybe they're like like this a lot and they've earned this moniker, this nickname of, you know, the one that's abusive. And I'm sure we can uh, relate to people, hopefully, that we don't know personally, but I know many of us do, um, that people that, that talk like that a lot. Uh, so you can just nickname them Akosa and they won't know what you're saying. <laughs> That's probably not a nice thought. Oh, dear. Um, so this, uh, this story starts where the Buddha is um, staying at, uh, it's called the, the bamboo grove near the squirrel's feeding place. And uh, sometimes it's called the squirrel's sanctuary. Um, he's obviously there being sheltered and practicing. And this, um, this person, Akosa, that, uh, is um, really unhappy and angry because they've found out that um, someone in their community, a Brahmin, a, a teacher, somebody maybe that they followed or admired has become a follower of the Buddha. And so this person is really mad about it. They don't really explain why they're so mad, but I guess they just are, yeah, they have that nature. Um, and so uh, it says this person, Akosa, angry and unhappy uh, in other descriptions, angry and displeased, yeah, goes to um, the Buddha. Uh, I think it's before the Buddha is fully awakened because they're referring to him as Gotama, the great monk Gotama, I think you know, all of these versions probably doesn't matter. So angry, unhappy, he goes to the Buddha um, and approached him and he abused and criticized what they call here the blessed one in foul and harsh words. Another anger and displeased, he went to the blessed one and on a arrival insulted and cursed him with rude, harsh words. And the last one says, overwhelming him with abuse and reproaches. 
nasty. So it was just something he didn't like. Um, somebody he respected and was following that um, became a follower of the Buddha. So he goes to the Buddha and starts um, dissing him and yelling at him and get, um, yeah, being contemptuous, angry, insulting, all of these things. And uh, so this is the teaching here that then the, the, the Buddha then speaks to this Akosa. He says, uh, I like this version better. He says, uh, what do you think, um, Brahman? He refers to him, not capitalized. Do you receive visits sometimes from friends and colleagues or family, blood relations and others? Yes, sometimes such people come to visit me. Well, what do you think? Do you serve them with um, some soft food, some solid food, some savories? Um, in another version, do you serve them staple and non-staple foods and delicacies, uh, snacks, food tidbits? So when guests come, friends, family, neighbors, um, do you serve them? And, and he says, yes, um, yes. Does he say yes sometimes? Yes, when they come to me, I serve that. Sometimes I serve them. Um, yeah. And so then the Buddha says, well, but you, so you offer this food and if they don't accept it, who, who gets it? Where does it go? Who does it belong to? You offer it, they don't accept it. And then this Akosa uh, replies back, well, if they don't accept it, then I get it back. <laughs> uh huh. Or if they do not accept good Gotama, then it belongs to us. Or they uh, another version, these, if they don't accept the master Gotama, then these foods are all mine. <laughs> So we can see the teaching, the wisdom in this already. And uh, so then the, <laughs> this person's obviously not familiar with the way the Buddha works his way around for someone to realize something, or they didn't see themselves walking right into that. And so then he says, well, similarly, or even so, you are abusing us. We're not abusing you. You're angry with us. We don't get angry. You're quarreling with us who do not quarrel. Um, it belongs to you. We're not dishing it back. We're not accepting it. We're not taking what you're offering. It belongs to you. Um, Another version, the abuse, the scolding, the reviling that you hurl at us, us who are not abusing, reviling, or scolding, we do not accept from you. It belongs to you, Brahman. It all belongs to you. And then, um, and, and if, if someone replies to abuse with abuse, if someone replies to scolding with scolding uh, or to reviling with reviling, that is like you joining your guests for dinner. But we are not joining you for dinner. It is all yours, Brahman. It is all yours. Um, yeah. And, and other versions, I don't accept it from you. It's all yours, Brahman. Um, and so, so then this uh, Akosa says, he's still, they're, they're, they say it different ways in these different versions. So one says it as a statement and others like a question. So I can't, I can't say which is 
the more accurate. So I'll just offer them both. Um, so in this one, he says, people, including the king, know the venerable Gotama, which is the Buddha, Buddha's um, birth name, Gotama. Um, they know him this way. The monk Gotama is the worthy one. When does the venerable Gotama become angry? Says it as a question. And um, in others, it said like an accusation again, like a, like a, um, a projection or a statement. And, and so he's saying, yeah, and you, you still get angry. And so um, the Buddha replies to that then. Uh, and there's this lovely verse. I won't try to um, mix up different versions, but it's basically in the verse going over the teaching and saying that if someone is abused and answers back with abuse of the two, they show themselves to be the worse. So it's saying that if somebody, you know, is um, being abusive and contemptuous, yelling, insulting, and we answer back in the same way, then this is... Um, seen that uh, you make things worse when you flare up at someone who's angry. And whoever doesn't flare up at someone who's angry, as it said in this verse, wins the battle that is hard to win. Because if you get into an argument with someone, does anybody win? Uh, no, I do like to think I win, but not really, nobody wins, it doesn't work that way. And uh, so whoever doesn't flare up is considered the one that's been more skillful and uh, more onward leading with their wisdom. Uh, and, and then it said that because we're living for the good of both, both yourself and the others, it goes on to even say that when knowing someone else is provoked, you mindfully grow calm. Then you are living for the good of both yourself and the other. Um, yeah, it's like a double, a double victory then. Not only are you staying calm and clear in your heart and mind, but it will affect the other. In, um, that they, if they're, if they're not getting any flashback, uh, they tend to also calm down to some degree, hopefully. Uh, it's another version just says it this way, understanding that man's or person's angry mood, uh, he can, one can help the other clear it and find peace. Uh, yeah, this is a, a word called upasamati. Um, and it comes from the other person's understanding or clear seeing, wisdom to be able to see there's no fruit to come from hurling accusations back at somebody and um, so from this clear understanding, one becomes calm internally and the other is also encouraged or invited or mirrored or um, becomes calm. Yes, so I, I, what I love about this teaching is the idea of someone kind of offering you a gift or uh, offering the food and just saying no thank you <laughs> you just don't accept the gift someone wants to hurl insults and abuse and cruelty and of course it affects us right of course it hurts um and and is triggering and all those things of course it's just part of human nature but we and we can just know that we can know 
oh, I really want to fight back <laughs> or, or, oh, that is terribly cruel and painful and hurts so much. And the more practice and wisdom and uh, relationship we have with ourselves, we can know this and respond rather than react. The more we do formal practice, the more we have community of people that are like-hearted, like-intentioned, similarly intentioned, gives us just that moment to pause and say, to see the wisdom that if I react back in kind, I'm actually um, in this teaching uh, considered even more um, unskillful, more harmful. Of course, as with all good things, easier said than done. <laughs> and to be able to, even just a moment of pause can be enough to walk away or can be enough to breathe, can be enough to lower our voice. And it may be then that we need to come back to the conversation at some point, but you can't have a conversation with someone who's yelling at you and abusing you and just putting you down. There's no conversation there, right? It's not like, yeah, but. Um, so that to, to know when that's happening and if you have a safe place to get away, to move away, or if you can't get away, how do you find that resource to not respond in kind? Um, yeah. And because it's our own hearts we're protecting. If we, if they have that effect of touching that same place in us and that and then we feel terrible, we feel regret, we feel remorse over being harmful and unskillful, and it hasn't made anything better. Yeah, so it's, um, it's not an easy teaching, but it's a powerful one. And uh, it sounds so simple just to, yeah, if they don't accept it, who gets it back? they get it back <laughs> they're just left like if you if if it's a uh, what did they call it in um oh gray wall is the term one of the terms that i um learned a little bit about where uh yeah just letting it be re reflected back on the person not accepting it Gray rock, yeah, thank you. Hmm. Yeah, so that's uh, the teaching I wanted to offer as there's so much um, abuse <laughs> in the world and harsh, cruel speech and unskillfulness. Uh, hopefully there's something of service in this. So let's have a practice together and... Um, let that teaching land in the heart body. So adjust your posture for whatever you need to be comfortable here. You can practice standing, walking, laying down, sitting, kneeling. So finding a posture that feels supportive in such a way that you can bring a sense of inner stillness.
notice what place for the eyes is most supportive for your energy right now. We want to be restful and wakeful. So a sense of gentle wakefulness and restfulness with that. So for some, it may be eyes closed, others prefer eyes slightly open or eyes resting on something peaceful and beautiful. As the eyes come to rest wide in the forehead and see if some ease can come across the expression. Check out the habit areas of tension in your body. Maybe around the face or jaw, neck or shoulders. See if any release is available there that feels helpful right now. Allow the weight of the shoulders to slide down. And all the way down into resting hands. And then a little check-in into the areas of the heart center and belly center. Is there any width or softness or ease that feels helpful to invite here? So that as the upper body relaxes, we may begin to feel a bit more weightedness through the pelvis, hips, legs, feet. Resting down, rooting down, receiving the support of the earth. And then for a few moments here, as I'm, we share the silence together, just opening to the body in this moment, you can kind of feel a sphere of attention, awareness that includes your whole being in whatever position the body's in. You don't have to notice everything about it or anything in particular just resting, wakeful, steady presence, a few moments here.
So in these moments of arriving and meeting yourself, you can start to notice how your, your being is tonight or whenever you're practicing with this. If you're feeling some steadiness and ease, you might want to just continue resting with the body and this kind of open field of awareness. Sounds are coming and going. Sensations coming and going. Thoughts come and go. Without picking up anything and abandoning ourselves, just resting here, meeting ourselves. And if you're finding your attention is a little more scattered tonight or uh, sleepy, you might find it helpful to have a bit more of an anchor. A common anchor is to focus a little more on the breath. So that moment by moment, feeling a sensation of breath. Just notice where you feel the sensation of breath most easily or excessively might be at your nostrils. Or the rise and fall of the chest. Or the expanding and contracting at the belly. So if you're using the breath as your anchor, you could just choose one of those spots that feels most accessible for you and rest with each wave of breath. And it's natural for all of us at different times that the mind will pick up a story or a sensation, a sound, an emotion, and travel away with it, get caught. And not to add judgment to it, but just gently noticing and beginning again. Resting with the whole field of the body or with the breath.
So as we feel this kind attention with ourselves in the flow of the present moment, we could really gently just float in the thought of visiting with someone and they offer you some refreshments or snacks or delicacies or food. And you just say, no, thank you. Or someone is offering you their harshness and cruelty, insults. And you don't accept it and it belongs to them. Try not to get hooked into any story or contractions in your body or mind. Notice if the neck or jaw contracted or eyes, fingers, belly. See if you can soften again and just meet yourself with this breath or this moment. Feeling how we want to be treated without cruelty, without quarrel, without insults, without shouting. And we resolve to offer that back to the world because we know that's what we wish for. If it feels supportive for you, you might add some internal phrases that remind you of your intention. May I be safe. May I be peaceful.
As you continue meeting yourself in the present moment, feeling inspired by the words from this teaching, this sutta, you live for the good of both, your own and the others. When knowing the other is provoked, you mindfully grow calm. These next few minutes of silence, really growing that resource within you, becoming familiar with it, that place of inner calm that you do have. It might feel like a place in the body that has a sense of inner calm or stillness, resilience, presence. Or it may just be known as words or intention. A few more minutes here cultivating this and becoming familiar with it. And as we come towards the end of this practice, 
if it felt like there is a place where this calm resides, just really letting that land. Or is there a phrase or word that reminds you? Or a part of the breath that feels like releasing some steam? Just take another moment to check that out for yourself, and then I will ring the bell in a moment. Thank you for your practice. And um, just to clarify, in case it, it wasn't clear, um, this is not at all to say that um, you should just sit calmly and when someone is being abusive in your presence. If you, you know, this is about obviously safety first and, and it's, uh, if you're able to leave the area, call someone, have someone be with you, whatever you need to do for safety, um, <laughs> please do. And um, acknowledging that sometimes that isn't possible and um, very difficult to remain calm when um, abuse is being dished out at you. Um, also, through experience, we've, we know that um, trying to give back the same is what this teaching is about, that, that um, causes harm for ourselves and for the others. And then what do we do with those times when there is something we should, for us to be hearing? You know, that uh, if somebody has some feedback for us or something that they need us to understand about, uh, that is something we need to really reflect on. And again, that's not what this teaching is about because this is not coming in a way of some skillful feedback. This story is about someone who's hurling insults and put downs and is angry and yelling and all that kind of stuff. That's not any sort of a conversation or place of feedback. So it's not to completely dismiss that there are times we need to hear something unpleasant from somebody and um, take that into account and into uh, reflection and our behavior. Uh, so just wanted to clarify these are, uh, that's not what this is, a, is referring to. This is a, a case of abuse where um, it's uh, not accepted and then it stays with the owner. Um, one of the other phrases here when it's kind of given in a verse form, it says, uh, it's, it's uh, nicely worded this this one um, the blessed one said it this way in verse or the Buddha how could anger rise because in this version they're saying you still get angry right and and he replies how could anger rise in one who is free Wrathless, all passions are tamed at peace, freed by the highest insight, um, so abiding, perfectly serene. If a man's, they keep using men here, if a person's abused and answers back of the two, they show themselves to be the worse if you answer back. But one who does not answer back in kind celebrates a double victory 
from their actions both sides benefit they themselves benefit and their reviler too or the person abusing them understanding that person's angry mood one can help them clear it and find peace and then become the healer of them both because both benefit thereby People think that a man like this is a fool for they are not understanding the truth or the Dhamma. Uh, so he's talking about how some people think you're being foolish if you just let someone yell at you and you don't yell back. And um, this teaching is saying thinking that way is not understanding the Dharma. So thank you for joining. If you watched on uh, the YouTube recording, it'll be on the True North Insight channel. Um, probably not till tomorrow night because I'll, I need to get back into uh, my Wi-Fi. And, um, um, and then just check the links down below the recording uh, and I'll reference this teaching. Okay. Thanks for being here and for folks on the Zoom call. We can hang out for a bit if you like. I'll just stop there.